to reopening and um, stopping the spread of COVID, you can register for vaccines on myturn.com or you can go to a link at Tahoe Forest Hospital District's website up at the top. Um, so please remember to get vaccinated, um, wear your masks, stay socially distanced, um, and wash your hands. And with that, I'm going to ask and defer to Dan Wilkins, our Public Works Director. We've heard a lot of public comment um, over the last day, and particularly today, um, regarding our um, defensible space and vegetation removal project. Um, Dan's gonna provide an update to the community and council on where we are with that project. Great, thanks, Jen. Yeah, Jen uh, asked me to give the give the council and community an update on the project. Uh, what I thought would be appropriate would be to maybe back up in time a few years in terms of uh, some of the um, events that happened in the state and locally here in the town that really led us to being working on this project right now. So, you know, the town uh owns and maintains about 160 miles center line miles of roadway which is 320 uh roadside miles because every road's got two edges and uh, we've historically done you know, maintenance in those areas to reduce the uh, impact of vegetation on uh on road maintenance activities storm removal activities those types of things and the the focus was uh, for at least probably the first 15 to 17 years, really uh, around uh, road maintenance and also minimizing controversy, right? Because there were times in the past where road maintenance related uh, brush removal and vegetation removal became controversial in the community. So we, we tried to hit that balance where the council ultimately wasn't hearing about it on a routine basis and where we were making forward progress on vegetation management. Then about four years ago, I can't remember if it was three or four years ago, the devastating fires in Santa Rosa happened when uh, there was major wildfire burned into a community uh, and that created an order of magnitude increase in concern uh, it, as it relates to fire resiliency here in Truckee. And that's, that's just measured based on the a uh, number of inquiries we were getting, the amount of public concern we were getting related to wildfire. And then uh, subsequent to that, the fire happened in Paradise, which created yet another level of uh, angst and concern within the community. The input that the staff and the council was hearing subsequent to the Paradise fire was something along the lines of, oh my gosh, look at what happened in Paradise, and we are a near carbon copy of that community and the potential for having the same thing uh, occur here. The Santa Rosa fire, uh, that was like a kind of a residential subdivision, not a whole lot of vegetation, which is really proof that at the end of the day, you know, a wildfire is and mother nature are going to rule the roost. Um, what we can do is we can try to move the needle on that and sometimes that'll be successful, but there's no such thing as 100% uh, safety when it comes to, to wildfire prevention. The, um, one of the things with the Paradise Fire that was, uh, that did, that Truckee does have some similarities to, was that the evacuation routes uh, for the community were significantly compromised during that event uh, by burning vegetation. So vehicles got trapped in roadways, residents got trapped in roadways, uh, and, and that was partly due to just too many people, you know, the number of people trying to exit the subdivision all at the same time, and partly due to those exit routes being compromised as a result of fire activity uh, and their, their effectiveness being compromised. So that led to another heightening of public concern. Uh, a lot of community feedback to the council about what are you town council going to do to improve the fire resiliency of the town of Truckee and not allow something like what happened in Paradise to happen here in Truckee. So the council took that seriously and uh, identified you know, wildfire mitigation and prevention as a as a high priority that happened uh, a couple of years ago. And uh, what that uh, manifested itself in 
was the town looking kind of broadly at what can the town do at, in a leadership role for the community as a whole, because the forest in Truckee really com com uh, comprises a mosaic of publicly owned property and privately owned property. You know, state parks own some of it, forest service owns some of it. We've got about 15,000 private parcels with 15,000 individual property owners that own some of it. Uh, but the town also owns some of it. So the 160 miles of roadway that we own, that's really our component of the, the overall uh, forest in, in the community. What's unique about our roadways is while they are a component of the overall forest in the community, they also serve uh, two functions which are unique to us as Truckee as a landowner. One of those functions is that our roadways are the wildfire evacuation routes and fire egress routes. So Bob just gave a, a great presentation on you know the zone basis that we've got for evacuations. Uh, that doesn't work if the roadways are compromised during a fire event and, and folks can't access them and use them. Um, the second uh, function that our roads uh, serve uh, to provide is a uh, opportunity for a fire break so you never know where a fire may start uh, generally it's going to burn from west to east but not always and it's a very dynamic situation so the the fire department um, is going to be figuring out a battle plan to help contain fire events that may be occurring in the community and uh, more oftentimes than not, roadways are basically used to draw that uh, line of defense. Um, if I sound like an expert in, in fire behavior and fire activity, uh, I'm not. All of this information was based on our communication with the fire district. So I, I heard a couple of comments earlier that seemed to suggest that the town was operating in a vacuum. Uh, that's not the case. We're in very close collaboration with the fire district. A lot of the work that we're performing is actually funded uh, through a grant that is flowing through the fire district. So just want to make sure the community uh, understands that there's a, a high degree of coordination that's happening between the town and the fire district. Um, the other thing that we're uh, continually trying to do is balance the public's use of the public right of way uh, with an individual uh, property owner who may be adjacent to a section of right of ways interests. And, uh, you know, that's what we're hearing a lot about right now is uh, we've got a number of some property owners that um, uh, I think are saying, hey, we're willing to take our chances that uh, a fire may not burn through our area and we're good with the way things look. We've got some folks saying, hey, we, we think you need to be more aggressive. Uh, I know you didn't necessarily hear all of that in the comments tonight. Um, I think a reason we're getting a lot of the comments is what we did from a public outreach standpoint is uh, look up the property addresses of every single owner in Sierra Meadows, Prosser, and Glenshire, which is where we have work planned this summer. And we sent every property owner a letter that this work was, uh, was coming forward. Uh, and then prior to that, there had been uh, various council actions and various fire district board actions uh, that uh, had you know, led up to this project moving forward. So um, the, the first phase of this project was actually implemented last year. So last year in the Tahoe Donner subdivision, we uh, did a similar project that actually was more aggressive than the one we're working on right now at uh, removing vegetation from roadsides. So in Tahoe Donner last year, we used the virtually an identical communication strategy as we're using this year uh, with when Glenshire, Sierra Meadows and Prosser notified the homeowners associations where they existed. Uh, we did have a problem this year. We always seem to have a problem knowing who to talk to at the Sierra Meadows Homeowners Association because they're uh, not as accessible as the Glenshire 
HOA has been in the past. Um, and then sent out, you know, individual property mailers. And then we have project staff that are assigned to the project that are available to go out and meet with property owners one-on-one -on -one to discuss exactly what they can expect in front of their property. So last summer, what we did in Tahoe Donner is we removed uh, the vegetation from that 10-foot strip adjacent to the edge of the pavement, uh, you know, throughout uh, the streets in Tahoe Donner. So 120 my, linear miles of roadway edge, if you will. And then the, the area that's 10 feet away between 10 and 15 feet away, we did selective thinning in that area as well. Um, one of the things that we run into when we're doing uh, vegetation management and roadway maintenance is a interest in um, consistency. So uh, what can oftentimes happen is one property owner that may have uh, interest in what's going on in front of their property will tend to compare what happened in front of an adjacent property. And they tend to be very interested in, in consistency and whether or not you know, there's more vegetation removal happening in front of one property than another, as an example. So um, what we found over the years is the more consistent of an approach that we can take, uh, the, the more that adjacent members of a neighborhood at least uh, don't have a sense that there's you know favorites being played or that uh, there's an inconsistent approach that's, that's occurring so anyway I've given you a lot of uh, a lot of background on on the project uh, so of the total project again Tao Donner Glenshire Sierra Meadows Prosser uh, we're about three quarters of the way done so the 120 miles of roadside edge that we did last year in Tahoe Donner, that's complete. And, uh, and we won't be needing to go back there anytime soon. We've got the remaining 40 miles in those other three subdivisions that we're working on. Um, the, what we're doing in, in these areas is we're, we're doing the vegetation removal in that 10 foot zone, which is absolutely consistent with what we did in Tahoe Donner last year. What we're not doing is that selective thinning in that next five feet. And one of the reasons is because of that consistency issue. So one of the things that came up in Tahoe Donner last year is some, some properties thought we were being more aggressive at that selective thinning in front of one property than another when we, in, in our opinion, we weren't uh, trying to be in any overt way, but it was just the nature of, of um, how the vegetation was, was uh, growing in front of any one property. So, uh, we also had a, an expectation that given the higher level of, uh, of full-time home uh, ownership in these other subdivisions, that there would probably be a higher level of interest and in all likelihood, a higher level of concern uh, with the project. So that was another factor that kind of played into our, our recommendations a couple of months ago to you know, limit this to the 10 feet off the edge of the roadway. Um, Coming back to evacuation routes and fire breaks, there is no prescribed distance or magic number uh, that it, it's like okay if you're at if you're at 60 foot wide you're safe if you're at 20 foot wide you're not it's it's kind of like the concept of of more is better and to put it in you know simple terms for my own mind I kind of think of it as anyone who's who has stood around a bonfire, the difference between being, you know, three feet away from a, a, a hot raging bonfire and 10 feet away is very noticeable. And so if you apply that to some kind of an evacuation scenario where you've got vegetation that uh, may be burning adjacent to a roadway, the further away from the edge of the roadway that it's burning, the more serviceable that evacuation route will be, the lower the likelihood of, of getting debris down on the roadway, et cetera. So um, those were a lot of the considerations that went into effect when scoping this project you know, between the town and in consideration with the fire district. Uh, with that said, as I mentioned earlier, we're continually trying to balance the public's interest in the use of the of the public right of way and, in, and individual property owners, I think the thing we've heard the most input on, and you know we've talked to about 200 individual property owners uh, at the staff level that have reached out as a result of the communication that we provided uh, about a month ago, and then had about another hundred uh, on-site one-on-one visits with property owners. The 
the concerns varied from, hey, I don't want you to do anything to, I want you to do more. And by the way, would you take some of these trees off of my private property while you're at it? So that's the kind of the spectrum we've we've heard from. I would say that the majority of the spectrum has been folks interested in us uh, not taking vegetation or taking less vegetation. A common theme seems to have been, do we really need to remove the larger trees, right? And then uh, in Glenshire, Prosser, and Sierra Meadows, that's been a common theme with uh, most people we've spoken to. In Sierra Meadows specifically, a, a common area of interest has been, what about the trees in the islands in the roadway? So um, as it relates to this, the island trees in Sierra Meadows, our plan is to not remove those, leave those alone, um, and just, again, focus on the roadway edges, which is you know, what we've been doing uh, throughout the uh, other areas of town. My thought, uh, given the level of concern over the larger trees, and again, in the interest of trying to hit this, this reasonable balance point, is that we would adjust our project uh, slightly so that any trees 24 inches in diameter or greater, uh, rather than removing those, we would limb them up 15 feet, which, uh, you know, in a conversation I had earlier today with the fire chief, uh, that seemed to be, uh, in his opinion, also a reasonable um, uh, adjustment to make to the project that we don't think would significantly compromise the, uh, the goals as it relates to fire resiliency, but that would also uh, maybe reduce that or, or eliminate that particular point of concern uh, from a lot of the citizens we've been hearing from. Um, other things that this project does unrelated to fire, uh, vegetation management, as I mentioned earlier, has a large component of uh, roadway maintenance considerations as well. Uh, tree roots will you know, wedge roadways and, and damage them, and uh, that, yeah, that can cause issues. Uh, shading from trees, it, it provides benefit in the summer in terms of providing cooling. In the wintertime, it makes the roads more hazardous by creating icing, icing spots. Uh, trees that overhang the roadway, what will happen uh, frequently is um, when storms come and go, we'll plow the snow. One day, if it's a cold storm, the trees may be holding, and then the following day, temperatures might come up, a bunch of snow gets dumped on the roads, and it, and it prolongs the, the ice schedule or the ice cycle on roadways. So in terms of this whole 10-foot dimension, that was another consideration is getting rid of that tree canopy overhang of the roadway also has winter maintenance and winter road safety repercussions as well. Uh, so anyway, I've, I've gone on for a, a very long time now. Uh, but I, and one of the reasons for that was to um, at least uh, kind of reinforce with you as the council that there's been a lot of thought that has gone into this project. There's been a lot of coordination. Uh, there's there's been a lot of effort. Uh, we've sent mailers to every single property owner who uh, would be affected by this. You know, I think. Um, one of the criticisms we're hearing is you should have sent mailers prior to uh, the project being scoped. Um, that's something we could have done. As I mentioned, what we did is we matched the public uh, uh, outreach strategy that we used in Tahoe Donner last year that, that seemed to be successful. That project was, was quite well accepted up there. So uh, we may have misjudged um, the level of uh, angst that this would create by some of the residents of the these other subdivisions. Uh, with that said, I'm not. Uh, I don't think the basic dynamic and the basic uh, issues uh, would have been a whole lot different had they come up six months ago versus uh, versus now. Um, you know, I think the you know, the basic differences of opinion uh, that individuals will have. Uh, in all likelihood would have existed then uh, as they do now. I would also suggest for anyone who's, because I, I think part of the concern is also tied to um, uh, maybe a visual uh, of something more dramatic than what would actually be the case. So I'm also, we're also encouraging folks to go up to the residential streets in Tahoe Donner and then also um, for folks that are out in Glenshire, they could go over to Waterloo, Circle, Sudsbury, Chelmsford, Woodbury, Rollins. Those are streets where we've already done the work over the past couple of weeks. And um, that would give you a very good firsthand uh, 
impression of what the final product looks like on a, a complete street uh, standpoint. So uh, with that, uh, I, I will uh, stop again. What um, what our intention is is uh, again to try to balance this. Uh, public use of the right-of-way versus uh, private property concern is to uh, leave the 24-inch streams, live them, limb them up um, uh, 15 feet. We think that'll give a, a relatively similar evacuation benefit, although some of those uh, issues with you know, icing of the roadway and, and root wedging and whatnot would continue with those trees, but um, it's something that we believe we can manage. So with that, I'll stop, and um, I think... Uh, unless Jen had anything to offer, uh, we could go back either to public comment or to the long range transit plan, hopefully. I just but thank you, Dan, for that. And I would just to summarize again what you we're not going to be cutting any trees 24 inches in diameter or larger um, measured at chest height. Um, we'll be limbing those trees up, and I believe you said 15 feet, um, just for, to provide some safety. We are not cutting any trees in the Sierra Meadows Center areas um, and I did hear some comments and I've, I've seen some written comments about work done in Sierra Meadows the only place that we have done work thus far is on those four roads that I believe you just mentioned in Glenshire so any other work that's been perceived in other neighborhoods has not been part of the town's efforts in this program thank you for that clarification that's very helpful. Um, and thank you for the explanation, Dan. I appreciate you guys addressing those community concerns. Um, so are we ready now, Kelly? We are ready Dear now. Klobstad, may I ask a question about that, that this sort of broader discussion? Are we okay are, with are questions we? on, because this was technically just a, no, this was technically a response to public comment, which we're trying to avoid well as part of the town manager's report i think it's appropriate for a question i don't think we can have a long discussion and there's certainly no direction okay great thank you go ahead vice mayor henderson so i guess my question is we're saying that the project is proceeding the mature trees 24 inches and greater in diameter will stay and will only be limbed up 15 feet and i guess my question then is are we going to do some additional outreach just to update the community around this of course we received a lot of public comment tonight those folks might not still be listening um, do we have a strategy for that yeah we do uh one thing i need to i haven't talked to the police chief yet but at the beginning of about a month ago we did a nixel alert uh, directing people to the town website that provided information on the project so we were hoping to coordinate with uh truckee police and truckee fire to do that again as well as our project management staff, it's having a lot of one-on-one -on -one communication. Uh, yeah, we've already talked with them about it, so that would be happening, and any any communication coming from the town would deal with that. And then I think we've got a town newsletter going out uh, later this week that we would incorporate this information in. That that's correct. It will be in the newsletter, and we'll work with other our other modes of communication, social media, and potentially Nixle. Thank you. Any other council member questions? All right. Again, thank you so much, Dan. Thank you, Jen. Now we're ready for right. you, Kelly. Can everyone hear me? And can we see the slides? Great. Okay, can everyone, can the other council members hear me? I'm up in the council chambers right now.